<laughs> this is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new value, and a new experience. Welcome to the Spirit Sessions podcast. I'm your guide, Katie Silcox, bringing you your weekly self-love soundbite. Join us where I'll help you find your true spiritual home, where every single aspect of you is holy ground. Holy ground. This is a journey into sound. Into sound. Into sound. Into sound. This is Spirit Session Podcast with Katie Silcox. Venga chicos, empezamos. Hey, dear listener, it's your girl here, Katie Silcox. Come to you with some sweet, sweet good news for your sweet spirit. You guys, I'm so excited to finally feel... Like I've got some hard data around what I really feel and what I've been intuiting and what really has been super support, supportful, supportful is a new word, um, of my journey. And that is that things might actually be a lot better than we know. And so we're going to talk about that today. But before we get into it, just a reminder that we begin Ayurveda school January 2022. And as you guys may know at this point, it is so much bigger than simply learning Ayurvedic health technologies and what to eat and what your dosha is, even though that's a big part of it, especially in our first year of school. So much of what we do in Ayurveda school is about life school, especially life for women and how to make your life better and how to, most importantly, teach you some of the incredible tools and and sciences around uncovering who you really are, you know, and and to really develop the, the confidence that we all need to live from that place. And it's not easy. So that's coming up. I would love to have all of you, dear listeners, in school. And it's for women who want to be Ayurvedic health coaches in the world and to serve other people. But more importantly, it's for any woman, any woman who wants to know herself. So let's get on to the show. So we're all becoming um, increasingly aware of just the deep effects that the media has on our minds. And I want to just preface this conversation about why things might be better than we know by saying the other side is also true. For, For many people on this planet, life is really bleak and life is really hard. And for many people on this planet, poverty and um, the effects of global warming and uh, any of the other traumatic events that we could list that can happen to people, like that's all very real. And so this conversation doesn't take away from those things at all. But what we are really leaning into and learning here at the Shakti School is that in order to come to solutions, Our greatest resource is our capacity for resource. In other words, on an individual level, if I'm going to come out of my trauma, for example, the thing that will enable me to truly digest and heal isn't my trauma. Did you get that? Okay. The thing that will allow people to come out of horrific racism and inequality is not more racism and inequality. In order for me to come out of disease, it's not more disease, right? This is just really deeply intuitive. What allows us to come out of these negative states, be them physiological, environmental, social, cultural, or deeply psychological, personal, and emotional, and spiritual 
is cult- the cultivation of the opposite. The opposite is what digests. That's it. So let's hold this capacity that we all have to, in one hand, hold the, the pain, and in the other, to really commit to cultivating the opposite of pain. So currently in our, in our world, and it's not current, it's, it's, it's common, we have what a psychologist would call a negativity bias. We tend towards the dark view of reality. And if you don't believe that, just look at journalism. Journalism understands that there is a part, it's not like journalists and the New York Times and Fox News or whatever you, you know, the BBC, whatever you, you look at. It's not that these are just evil beings that are wanting to, you know, ruin our lives by focusing heavily on negative news. It's that they've tapped into this unfortunate (laughs) evolutionary aspect of the human brain, which is we tend to focus on what's wrong, the what's wrong attention, if you will. And there could be very good evolutionary biological reasons why we did that. Right. And I've spoke about this before, both in Shakti school, if you're a student of mine and and on the podcast, it makes sense. Like if you're a, you know, a little being, you know, or or caveman or woman being walking around in nature and you notice that there's a cave and you, you know, remember that memory stored in your mind that, you know, you're walking by that cave a couple years ago and maybe a tiger came out and ate half your family, it's going to be very, very beneficial for you to remember that. It's going to be way more beneficial for your long-term survival for you to remember that than it's going to be to remember all the nice little gentle caveman, cavewoman nuzzles and smiles and acts of graciousness that occurred 99% of the time for our evolutionary survival, it will behoove us to remember things that were um, dramatic and negative. Okay. So that's your, that's your hind brain. That's your survival brain. And so the idea on the spiritual journey is that we love and honor and thank you. Thank you so much for this, you know, survival mechanism nature has implanted in us, but she also gave us this incredibly vast supercomputer of the brain that's so big that, you know, if you've had a baby, you know that. Um, Nature is willing to make women go through a great amount of pain (laughs) to birth this massive baby brain. We have all these other capacities that survival-based animals don't. It's what makes us incredible, right? And so what we're being invited into on the spiritual realm is to honor this negativity bias while at the same time growing our compassion and growing our hope and growing our capacity to see future dreams that may include creative solutions to the world's biggest problems. And we cannot do that if we're stuck in the darkness, if we're stuck in this survival brain, this polarizing brain, this um, brain that has the tendency to think it's right and people that think like us are also right. So what I would love to do today is share with you some really incredible stuff, some really incredible statistics, um, just really about how much our world on a, on a, on a macro level is getting better, despite what people believe. There was a study done of, of Americans in 2016. So guys, I can only imagine how much worse it would be now um, in 2021. But the survey found that only 6% of Americans said that the world was, was a better place. And, and many thought it was getting worse. And, and I guess the vast majority kind of felt neutral. Only 6% said it was getting better. And, you know, if you're listening out there and you're like, but Katie, I need to be informed. I need to read the news. I want to help people. It makes sense. Like you guys, my listeners, it's you all, you guys are smart people. You want to be educated. You want to stay abreast to the, the news. You want to be compassionate to those 
in other places that are struggling and suffering. And that's the most wonderful aspect about us. It's natural that we want to stay in the current world events and know what's going on. But remember, journalism thrives are on on that innate negativity bias. There's also something called the Tocqueville effect. And that effect is that the actually the better things are in our world and in our individual lives, the more we criticize the world to find that remaining problem. So just imagine, you know, I think about an Indian spiritual teacher I was listening to when I was living in India, and he said, you know, so many of the problems that people think about are rich people problems. And I was like, well, what, what could that mean? And he said, you know, when you have to go about your life, when you really have struggles for um, putting food on the table and a roof over your head and your family's head, you aren't thinking about your, um, you know, neurotic mother issues. <laughs> you, you don't have that luxury. And so in a way, um, ruminating over the state of the world is very much a, a wealthy person problem. The better things are, the more we have time to criticize the world and its problems. And that's okay, you know, noticing that and and tuning to that, we can become solution-oriented. And in, in the Shakti school, we call this the healing vortex. So um, an, another thing I want to say about our tendency, and I'm not saying I'm above this. I hope you really get that the reason that I created Ayurveda school is because I needed Ayurveda. The reason I've created Spirit Sessions podcast is I need the reminder, right? And I need to be in the deep study of my own negativity bias and my own polarizing tendencies. And I want to kind of frame this negativity bias that we all have within the greater compassionate arms of, of a context. And that is, if you feel scared of the state of our world, if you feel worried about the polarizing political reality in our world, especially in the United States, if you're worried about coronavirus, if you're worried about the future of for your children and what kind of place we're creating for them, I want you to know how legitimate those worries are. We worry and we focus on the negative because on a basic level, it's our survival brain's way of protecting us against the truth that our humanity is fragile, that you are fragile, that your life is fragile. This 2020, you know, even into 2021, we've all become acutely aware of how fragile things really are. All systems go, right? All systems not go, actually. So it's correct to feel how fragile all of us are. It's a spiritual, um, let, let me say it like this, to unconsciously let that fragility fear run our lives is to live in a constant state of fear and worry and anxiety and depression. To feel into your own fragility and the vulnerability therein you know, to get up in front of you guys every week and send you out a podcast. I make myself vulnerable before my listeners, you, dear listener, and I will keep doing it. And I hope in the future, I'll continue to get even more truthful and vulnerable. But when you allow yourself to be vulnerable, and yet you are steeped in a part of you that can witness all of that, your vulnerability transforms into something else. When you feel the fragility of your human experience and you fully let yourself feel that without judgments, what you realize is that there's something else here that is not fragile. And that's my hope for today's podcast with you, that through remembering what else 
is also here besides our fragility, we can strengthen ourselves. So let me flood your ears, beloved, with some truth bombs. The vast history of most of our ancestors as late as 1820 is that they lived in a lot more disease and poverty than we do. As late as 1820, 84% of the planet was in extreme poverty. And a lot of our mothers and foremothers and grandmothers died young and they died in childbirth. And I remember, you know, my grandfather's generation, late, late um, 1800s, early 1900s, it was very common to lose a few kids. And now that is a great tragedy and it's rare. So the World Bank has now shown, now remember that statistic as late as 1820, 84% of the planet living in extreme poverty. The World Bank now shows that extreme uh, poverty is down to 8.6%. You guys, that's a miracle and something to celebrate. Now, that doesn't mean that now now that we're celebrating and we feel the power of the humanity's capacity to change, let's help the 8.6. 8.6 are, are still in extreme poverty, but this is also despite overpopulation of the planet. So the, the population is has been, it may not be soon, but it has been growing. 8.6 people. That's incredible. At that rate, by 2030, 5% of the population would be in extreme poverty, and, and that's not okay, right? And we need to do something about it. Other statistics, and by the way, I'll give you some resource at the, at, in the show notes of where you can read all about this uh, and, and more good news. Caloric food supply has increased. Um, people globally are able to eat more calories than they were before. There is evidence that in many parts of the world, there's dramatic tree cover gains. Now that doesn't take away in any way, shape or form from the dramatic losses of tree cover in the tropics. But all in all, some studies show that tree cover is actually growing more than it's being lost. Wow. That's, you're not reading about that in the New York Times. From 1980 to 2020, there's been a dramatic drop in autocracies and a rise in democracies. Autocracies? No, autocracies. That's amazing. And that comes from the Center for Systemic Peace. We are actually in a period that experts refer to as the long peace. Wars are not okay ever. They suck. It's never good. But wars worldwide have declined from 1946 to 2017 and dramatically, and they kill fewer people. That's great news. Okay, here's one that blew my mind. Shocking. (sighs) This is so rad, you all. Deaths from natural disasters. Okay, in other words, your chance of dying from um, a hurricane, a a tornado, a flood, an earthquake, that's all dropped 99% since the 1920s. And you may be saying, how did that happen? Well, technology, right? We're building better buildings and we have satellites and computers that can predict these adverse events. That is why all of our focus should be on the poorer areas of our world. They are the ones that suffer the most from these natural disasters. So those areas, we do need to help them with money and with the technology that can help them also build better infrastructures. Um, Women in politics is radically higher than ever since, you know, patriarchy took over. (laughs) Women in politics is up. Global literacy, global literacy is up. IQ is up. 
total global income is up for individuals. Income equality globally is down. People living in slums is down. Another incredible um, one is that countries decriminalizing homosexuality is dramatically down. So that's just a few of them that I wanted to share with you. I got this information from an incredible book. It's called 10 Global Trends Every Smart Person Should Know. And we'll put the link in the show notes. I read, um, like, there's way more than 10 global trends, by the way. So I read you guys a, a real tiny, tiny amount of these. If you want to read even more, you should check them that book out. So that's just that's just some global statistics that might shift your perspective and change your day. But on the on the human level of you, dear listener, the individual, we our our, our spiritual journey becomes supercharged when we realize the importance of the yin and yang symbol from our ancestors. Meaning Duality is the nature of reality, and the more we can find balance between these forces, the better. If we know that our minds tend towards negative thinking, that's just true for so many of us. Our minds, unless we're, you know, trained, that's why Tibetan Buddhism exists. That's why these practices exist. We need training. So unless, you know, we were raised as a Tibetan Buddhist, which I doubt many of us were, our minds are, are, are going, our thoughts rather, are going to tune towards that negativity bias. So thinking of that yin and yang symbol, if we know the mind's tendency to go to the negativity bias, I have to actually cultivate way, way, way more of the positivity, the thoughts, and the and tuning my awareness to the emotions that bring about a sense of, of hope and safety and ease and excitement and joy and fill in the blank. I have to actually work the muscle of my positivity to even come into a homeostatic balance. Now, compound this with the internet, right? And so even more, I have to actually make it my life's work to grow that positivity. I hope this is helpful for you. And I really hope that it resonates. I think it, I think it will. I think, and I'm, I'm visualizing and I'm dreaming in this next stage of our collective journey whereby we heal these rifts, whereby we take radical responsibility for the state we emanate. What is your vibration? What, what are you putting out into the world? I mean, if you want to freak out, go look up the HeartMath Institute's images of what our resonant field. This is just your electromagnetic radiation coming off of your heart. It's measurable. It's science. Um, when you're in a state of fear, it's coming out from you about like a foot, like it's tiny. When you're in love, it's going out 40 feet. And, and they actually said it's probably bigger than that, but their machinery can't measure that far. 40 feet. Do you know how good it feels to have your heart blasting out 40 feet and coming back to you, by the way? What's coming back? Stuff that's good. Right? All right, y'all. I know you get it. I just wanted to add some real stats and fuel to your love fire. As always, I'm your girl, Katie Silcox, coming to you with Spirit Sessions. I hope to see your shining face in 2022, and I'm sending you all lots of love.